My personal style is really white TV, black TV. Hood nigga me, please. <laughs> I am Jasmine Bernice Nelson, born and raised from the Night Walk, New Orleans, Louisiana. My fashion brand got started in 2016. Um, I was doing a hard time in life, uh, staying with a friend. And I was trying to figure out how everyone was making a big name for themselves on Instagram on social media period when uh, he was going through one of my sketchbooks and he was like yo he was like if you could put this in play he was like this would be fire and uh my brand got started from there um like just from struggle just from trying to make some shake for for what I was going through at the moment I really didn't have a particular focus of what I was going to uh but that struggle, that struggle of the moment that I was in at that particular moment, having nothing, having to find a way to eat, having to put food on the table, like eager to be somebody, you know what I'm saying, to come from something, that particular moment, uh, that was that was it for me. The name of my brand uh, is Panache. I was trying to figure out a way to incorporate uh, someone being confident with wearing my clothes. Um, so if they placed on a shirt or a hat, uh, you know, even as, as so as much as a, a sticker that was placing on a computer, I wanted them. I wanted them to be confident about it, um, feel flamboyant, feel nice about what they was wearing, and basically not even spending too much of their money for it. But I wanted it to look nice. Uh, so I basically was uh, googling synonyms that that make confident, and the word panache sticked out perfectly. So that's the word that I went with. I was like, damn, that'll be perfect to call a brand. I mean, it sounds, uh, it sounds designerish. To be honest, I've, I've accomplished life. <laughs> I've accomplished being alive. I've accomplished uh, waking up every day in the morning to my family. When I come from New Orleans. It's hard. You know what I'm saying? It's hard with my fam, with my family, with my mo with the way my mother raised us. Uh, with my daddy being away and he moving to Colorado, it was hard, it was different. Basketball was my outlet. Um, to be honest, I've never really accomplished anything. Like, that's just being, that's just being honest. We made it to the championship when we was in high school and we fell short. When I got to college, uh, we never could get past a certain point. I spent $10,000 on an event that wasn't successful. Uh, it's, it's so much stuff that I can name that I wasn't successful in. But me being myself, you know what I'm saying, to keep going, that's successful for me. To be able to go through all that, going through Katrina, uh, losing people, you know, stuff like that. That's just, that's accomplishments, accomplishments for me. The hardest thing I ever had to do was bury my mother. Like I've anything that I've come in encounter if encounter with, dealt sure with, that, that was the hardest thing that I ever had to do was bury my mother. Like that's somebody like like that was that's my like how you know how people say like where I'm from, we like that's my dog, like that's my partner. You know what I'm saying? Like she really was my my friend, like my my, my everything to me. Um, so having to bury her, that just, that just really, it was hard for me. It was hard. You don't get through that. You deal with it. You cope with it. And you laugh and you joke and you wake up and you party and you, you pass through holidays and shit like that but you don't you don't really get through it you know? 
I'm saying? Like, I was depressed. <laughs> I never ever talked about it. Like I never talked about how I feel. You know what I'm saying? About what I went through, or how I felt. Um, this right now, what I'm doing right now, is the first time I've ever ever talked about it to anybody. You know what I'm saying? Like it was. It's, that's a different feeling, you know what I'm saying, of losing losing your mama versus, I mean, any parent, but your mama is different. That shit sit with you, <laughs> you know? Um, a typical day for Panache. Oh, man. Trying to... <laughs> trying to communicate with people over a text message or an email is is like the stress <laughs> the typical stressful day for panache um i'm trying to incorporate things in my brand that's just not mediocre just not a shirt with a gilding tag in the back of it i want my own tags i want to manufacture it i want my own uh measurements like i want that kind of specifics to be incorporated inside the brand. So imagine trying to talk to somebody that's, you know, manufacturing your clothes and trying to give them measurements, trying to give them the specific details that you want inside of the brand with the stitching. It's just a lot, um, it's stressful. So, I mean, I wake up in the morning, probably eight o'clock every morning, and sometimes I fall asleep two o'clock in the morning, writing and texting emails through WhatsApp. I'm most active on Instagram. Um, so Instagram, P-A-N-A-C-H-E, the number nine, C-O. That's the Instagram, and you probably can find us on all social media networks under that name. I'm definitely passionate about basketball. That was my initial, my initial dream, my initial plan before I had two you know, career-ending knee surgeries. So I love basketball. Me growing up, that's all I knew. I've been doing it since I was 10, 11 years old. I had plans to go to the WNBA. And of course I was good enough to go to the WNBA, but you know, some things just don't work out as planned. Um, I always, I got my degree in education. So but I always have a background to go back to, to even if I want to coach kids, if I want to teach kids. Um, yeah, my knee's bad, but if you ever want to see me on that court, <laughs> it can get real serious. <laughs> I plan to take Panache to levels that people don't even know that exists. Trying to create different, you know, different pieces to represent us. Um, and not just to represent us, anybody the way, but just specifically for my for the lesbian community or whatever, gay lesbian community. Um, I'm trying to take this to another level that's beyond amazing. And I want people to I want people to be on a ride with me, on the journey with me. You know what I'm saying? Uh, to be like, damn, I remember when she was just here and she created the little t shirts with this and like I want them to see it. I want them to I want everybody to be on a ride with me to see this journey grow. To answer something amazing, like something extravagant. If you ever came across to Vinci from New Orleans, uh, my guy, he started out designing shoes and he just took his brand to another level. Like, I'm in love with everything he do, his cre from his creativeness, basically, like, pull clothes apart and he restructured, restructured them back to. A vision that he has in his head. Um, he's just having fun with it. Absolutely, he's he's having fun with it. He's he's doing what he loves. He's uh, curating his friends and everything inside of it. Um, and that's that's just, just what it's about. He's definitely an inspiration to me. The best part about being a fashion designer is being creative. I'm always creating in my head. I don't care what time of day it is. I don't care if I'm just waking up. I don't care if I'm at work, I don't care if I'm in a club, 
I don't care if I'm at dinner, I'm always creating. I always come across an idea that that transpires in my head. So if I see somebody walking across um, the dinner table with a certain kind of jacket on, I'll be like, oh, I'll be like, that's hot. And I'll be like, I could I could take this and I could do this with this and like that. Like you're always getting ideas. So the best part about fashion is creating, to being creative. You can also take your own spin of what you, you know, got in your head and you create with it. It's just good, it's fun, it's, it's good energy, you know what I'm saying? It's, it brings happy, it, it brings happiness to me. Like I never thought that I'll be creating clothes or I'll be inter interested in the fashion. Brand Panache is, uh, this is, this is for my mother. By me, this is for my mother. Um, like, I put my every, I'm putting my everything inside of this brand. Everything I have, every doll I have, every piece of energy I have, every thought process I have goes inside of this brand. When I played basketball, she was really my biggest fan like my biggest fan. I'm talking about she never missed a game. When I was in high school, she never missed a game. I went to college, I went off to Texas. She drove down to Texas to watch me play. And then I came back to Baton Rouge to play at LSU. And that lady never missed a game. She was always there, you know what I'm saying? And then during the time she got sick, I just felt, you know, I felt her energy drift. And um, she called me on the phone one day. And she was like, Jazz, um, she was like, this is exactly, she was like, Mama, she was like, I'm tired today. She was like, I'm, uh, I'm gonna go home and rest and I'm gonna watch the game on the TV. And I was like, all right, that's cool. I was like, that's fine, Ma, you could, you know, get some rest and stuff like that. And um, so at that moment, you know, I knew that she, you know, that she was starting to, she was starting to drift away, you know what I'm saying? Because she never missed a game. She was all, always there for me. Um, even me, even with me dealing with my injuries and everything, like, she was there for me and she prayed for me and she was like, we're going to get through it. And she never missed an important moment in my life ever, you know? You know, she she was she she was really good to me. <laughs> Even though she was my mom, like it's just she was good to me. Um, mm. So this is who this for. This is for my mother. For me to be into the fashion industry. Like, it's hard for me to find clothes for me. Like, I'm a, I'm a six foot female and I like to wear swaggy stuff, you know what I'm saying? So I figured, why not create something for me that I could wear? Um, even for other people, you know what I'm saying? That go up into the malls like Galleria and they see $500 sweatpants. Like, they can't afford that. I, I barely could afford it. So why not make something that's just as, you know, just as fashionable as the sweatpants in the Galleria, but at an affordable price for everybody that could wear it. That's just my, my aim for what I'm doing, to make high fashion attractive clothes at a reasonable price. Everybody could look nice. I see myself in the next five to 10 years. Look, I'm gonna be a thousandaire. <laughs> You feel me? I'm gonna be a thousand there, and then eventually we gonna we gonna grow to the M's. Um, I don't see myself working for nobody in the next five to ten years. I'm gonna just be honest with you because it, I'm a hustler, and I any way possible I find a way to make money or I, I got a plan for something. Um, right now I'm I'm doing some things within my real life job that I'm doing. I see myself. 
I see myself in a really, really good place in five to ten years. Um, and growing. It's just gonna be a really good spot. I promise you. I put that on. I'll put that on my mama. My personal style is really my. You know, I'm gonna be honest with y'all, bro. My personal style is a hood nigga. <laughs> Like I'm really, I'm really plain. I like I will white, I will white tea the death out of you. <laughs> white TV, black TV. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I'm plain. As you see, my the way I create clothes is plain style. You know what I'm saying? But it's for everybody to wear. It's to put their own style and everything to it. But hood nigga, me please. <laughs> Wear a carpet. Let me see. I actually, I got this joint right here. This polo right here. I'm gonna put this on on a red carpet with some with a nice pants. I could wear this with a sneaker, with a loafer, high top, low top. I could wear it with a sandal too. Um, it really don't matter. Um, but the pieces that I create, um, depending on how you put it, how you place it. Really mixed up and wear any way, any style that you choose to wear. Even like this sweater, you could wear this sweater with some slacks on and loafers on. You know what I'm saying? Or you could wear the pants that I got on with loafers on. And a polo t shirt. You know what I mean? Like everything, everything correlate together. Um, but, you know, you never know. <laughs> I went. I went into a stage of depression when I realized that I was I was living without my mother. Like losing her, that shit just brought me into into a dark space. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't know if like I don't know if many people know that dark space that I'm speaking of, but it was dark. It was gloomy. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I can I never forget the night. That um, I never forget the night that she that she left. Um, I just had got off from work, and at the time I was working at Centaurs, and I was headed to my apartment, you know, to get get off from work and stuff. And my brother gave me a call, and he was like, "Jazz, um, he was like, mom's not responding. He was, he was like, I think you should come over, you know, and just stick around." Um, that day, that day, she, um, <sighs> that day, this was like, this is a, a couple, this was like a couple years, probably one or two after she got diagnosed, diagnosed with ALS. And that, that specific day, I never, I never forget it. Um, she was scheduled to go to the doctor. And um, she woke up that morning because I, I stayed over there at her apartment that day. And um, <laughs> she was scheduled to go to the doctor and she woke up with like this spirit around her. <laughs> like she was happy, she was glowing. Um, you know, that, that light was just lingering above her head. And um, she was so excited. She got dressed and was waking everybody up to go to the doctor. And um, when she finally made it, my stepdad took her to the doctor. The, she finally made it to the doctor. And um, the doctor she was supposed to see ended up canceling her appointment because he had jury duty. And um, when she I don't know. It was it was crazy. It was like that spirit. She was just excited and excited to see him. And um, when she f realized that she couldn't see him, it's just like everything went down here from there. Like she just really she broke down after that. It's like she gave up after that that specific moment. Um, and um, so my brother called me over. And I went to the house. And all I, can, all I can remember is me walking inside the room and she was just laying there unresponsive. And um, I went over to the bed and I, you know, I, I touched her. And uh, like she was all cold and um, <laughs> she was cold and like 
damn. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, um, so I try to talk to her, and as she heard my voice, she grabbed me. She, what she used to do, she used to always grab me by my hair, and she used to always play in my hair. So when she heard my voice, she grabbed my hair, and she kind of clenched on to it. Um, and um, she just held me. So that in that moment, um, we had the nurse come to the house, and she checked the heart rate, and she was just like, um, her heart rate declining. So this might be it. Um, you guys should call everybody over here and just just keep her comfortable and stuff like that. And um, we just waited. We just waited, waited, waited. And I climbed in the bed and I wrapped my arm around her and I just held her. And I held her till she took her last break. And um, It was like 10 minutes after she had passed and I just laid down with her until it was trying to until it was time to take her. You know, and after that <laughs> it was it was it was it was different for me. Um I couldn't I couldn't really grieve because when she found out she was sick, uh she got an insurance policy. But the insurance policy had to be, it had to be fulfilled for two years in order for us to get the full amount, the full amount of barrier. So it was only, the fucking check was only like $585. Um, so we ain't had no money to barrier. So that time for me to grieve, that was out of the question. I had to figure out a way to bury my mama because she didn't deserve nothing else. You know what I'm saying? Like. She deserved to have a proper burial. Um, when I was in school, I met um, a breakfast club. She was a season ticket holder at LSU. And um, I met her on a plane. And during that moment, during the time, um, I called her and I explained to her everything that was going on. And I just cried to her. Uh, and she was just like, um, don't worry. She was like, it's okay. Um, just give me a second. She was like, I'm gonna call you right back. And when she called me back, uh, <laughs> the shit was unbelievable. She called me back. Uh, she was like, uh, I need you to go up to the women's basketball facilities and um, they're gonna hand you a check that bury your mother. So, raise, uh, unless you hadn't raised money to. People, my mom and tired from her after that, and that took a toll off my shoulders, like for everything. You know what I'm saying? Like I was forever, forever thankful for them, forever. I let you forever, forever. I don't care under what circumstances. You know, and after after everything got handled, um, I was be able to breathe. You know what I'm saying? And then realization settled in. To realize that damn I don't have my mama no more like she's not here for me to call when I'm hurt or when I need um, and I didn't know what to do I didn't know how to handle life I didn't know how to I didn't know shit <laughs> to be honest like I was walking around like a chicken with my head cut off um, and I went into depression I went into a full depression mode to what everybody around me that I didn't care about, even even the woman that I was with at the time, um, I hurt her. Um, like I made dumb decisions. I hurt my friends. You know what I'm saying? Like I made this some dumb decisions with my friends. My friends that I've been with for ten plus years since we was yeah high. Um, it was just it was different for me. A dark place um, and gradually I'm not gonna say that I'm I'm good but I'm good you know what I'm saying every day that I every day I deal with missing her every day I deal with 
her absence. Um, but today I'm learning. I've learned to cope with it. I understand better. I get it now. You know what I'm saying? Like having the absence, the absence of like my parents, like someone that's really good to me. That's one that's close to me. I understand. Um, so I take this clothing line, um, especially this, especially this, uh, the certain selection that I'm doing here. Um, her birthday, my mom's birthday is November 25th. Um, so I'm releasing a series that represents her. Um, it's going to be an all black series. Everything's going to be all black. Um, it's going to be a signature release. Something like what I have on here. Her favorite color was purple, so every single piece will have a purple tag in the inside of the brand. It's basically dedicated to her. I'm doing this. Um, Mom, I would just want to let you know that I love you. Like, I love you sincerely. Like, um, it was, I love you. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I'm doing this for you that's dedicated to you. Um, um, I hope you're proud of me. I hope you're proud of me. Cause this shit gonna be fire. <laughs>